Well, we added a new member to our family. Um, unfortunately, our little border collie that we had for almost 18 years passed away after such good and faithful service to us for many, many years. And um, we knew that we had always said that we were going to pare it down as our dogs had started to pass away because at one time we had um, three dogs and that was just a bit much when we went to travel and stuff and then especially when, once we got Burr because he was really large but anyway so um, when Sissy passed away we were going to just leave it at just Burr and um, we had adopted the two back cats that aren't uh, the two cats in, that are out back, um, they don't come in the house or anything, but we did get them spayed so that they wouldn't um, propagate all over the place. And anyway, so, you know, feeding the three of those, we said, well, that was enough. And um, But I kept going out every day, and there was just a big empty spot without Sissy there. And I just, it just couldn't be filled. And so I, I talked to Ronnie, and, you know, he kind of, he stuck to his um, really didn't want another dog and um, I just like I said I couldn't get past it after so many years of having her there and she was such a sweet and loving dog and and Burr of course is a, a very sweet and loving dog but Sissy was just a whole different type of dog and she was my dog um, she was the only female dog we had and um, she was just my dog um, she took good care of Jonathan when he was younger and everything, but again, she was just my dog. It was just one of those things. And there's Delilah. Um, Delilah, we picked up in the pound uh, at, in a town, um, just the, the other town over from us. Um, she was at, at a kill shelter, and she was coming up on her time. So they were doing a free adoption day, and I didn't even I didn't even know that this was going on. Actually, I just stopped in there because I had seen some pictures, and she was not one of the dogs that I originally went to look at. And um, but I took one look at her, and I asked if we could take her out, and I had my grandson with me that day, so I asked, could we take her out and see how she does with him? And then um, I just fell in love with her, and she's just. Full of personality. I know she doesn't look like it right now, but she really is full of personality. And um, I said, well, I needed to find out if Burr wanted to adopt her because, of course, any dog that we got, Burr would have to adopt also. And uh, Burr loved her too. She was not quite sure about Burr, but Burr loved her from the first minute. He's just a sweet and loving guy. That's just the way he is. Um, she was like, Yes, I want a new home, and yes, I want to be with the two-legged peoples, but I don't know about that great big furry thing over there. So anyway, um, they do love each other now. Um, they've been together. This is going on week two now, and um, so they are learning to love each other and getting along pretty good. Uh, Burr loves her a little bit more than she loves him still, but she's not so much wanting to eat his face off every time she sees him, so we're moving right along. And you'll see Burr is his usual big old furry self, and he's put on more fur because of winter. He's um, over 90% recovered, according to the vet, and probably about as recovered as he's going to get, but we are very pleased with his recovery to point. Um, but you'll notice his fur, and then you notice her fur. Um, he's a guard dog. He's in the house right now, but at night when he'll, he'll go on duty. And... Um, He's got a very, very nice thick coat, and he loves being outside in the rain and the cold. Nothing bothers him. Nothing. He's just, you know, Mr. Easygoing. Well, little Miss uh, I Need a Fur Coat here uh, does not like so much when it's raining and when it's cold, and it hasn't even really gotten cold yet. It got down into the 40s uh, the one morning, and she was just not too happy. She was trying to see if she could actually walk around on one or two legs if possible. She was doing more hopping than walking. She really didn't want to do her business outside. And um, this is the first small dog I've ever had. So I didn't know anything about him, but uh, I'm learning a lot with her. And one of the things that I learned very quickly was that she's going to need something to keep her warm because she doesn't want to be outside when it's cold and wet. Um, and I know, you know, she's like a, 
a miniature pincher mixed with a fox terrier and maybe some Jack Russell terrier. So that's about as much as we know about her. She's a pretty cute little thing, little dock tail there. And, um, but she's cold and shivery type a little, and, and they're bred supposedly, you know, to go, uh, what they call to ground to, you know, bring out pests and stuff. That's what they were originally bred for. But I think anymore, you know, little dogs are far from their original breeding. But anyway, so I said, well, I don't want to have to go out and buy her coats and stuff. So I found a free pattern online and the free pattern consisted of it all came on one piece of paper and you just flipped it out and um, then there's a little collar piece here it is a little collar piece okay and so that's what it was all on one piece of paper and then that's an extra small and then if you needed a small you increased it a hundred uh, percent um, a small a, a medium was 150 percent and so on and so forth so that's how you determine the size. Well, I'm, I'm not very good with the 50 and 100 percent, but anyway, so um, I cut what I thought was about 100 percent because I figured she's about a small dog and I kind of measured the length on her back and I tried to measure, you know, around her little waist and stuff. And uh, so I kind of guesstimated at it. And then I was reading the instructions and I thought, well, gosh, this just seems like the long way to go about it. And um, if you've seen the price of material anymore, I thought, I'm not spending $7 a yard for some, you know, the patterned material that they were talking about and plus the lining. Um, so I, I came up with a, a homesteading cheap idea like, uh, you know, we always try to do because, you know, we always try to save money where we can. So my idea was I have a whole lot of these blankets that Walmart, they're, they're like little uh, micro fleece, I think they call them blankets that Walmart had put on clearance um, a year or two ago for like a dollar and my son was here visiting from New Jersey and and we were camping or something I don't remember what the the situation was but he ended up buying like a whole lot of them in all different patterns and colors because they were so cheap and I don't know if it's because they don't have anything that cheap up in New Jersey or what but he bought a lot of them and he left a lot of them here and so we've just been using them here and there for different little things and stuff and, you know, to cover up with. We've got some in our camper and they, they are pretty warm. We keep several of them actually down at the cabin because they're so warm for such lightweight little things. But we still had some around here. So I thought, you know what? That would make a perfect lining for her little jacket. And then I thought, well, what am I going to use for the outside? Well, I had um, an old jean skirt that one was just a little shorter than I like it and two just didn't seem to ever fit right so I never wore it a lot and I bought it at the um, the thrift store for um, the Optimist Club actually and I think I paid like 50 cents for it so um, even if I had went and purchased these specifically for this purpose it would have been a dollar fifty for the material and then I thought, well, I need something for closures and I don't want buttons because, you know, that'd be, take too long. I want something quick on and off for her. And um, so I found this in my stash of uh, what I call notions and such for sewing. And it's reusable Velcro straps. And I don't think they were actually meant for sewing, but, you know, they've got a bunch of Velcro that you can buy. But this, there's like rows and rows of this. It's a lot of material. So... I'm not sure what I purchased set for either, but I had it, so I figured we'd use it. And then I thought, well, I have some other jeans and stuff too, and I thought, well, with the size of that blanket, I could make her several little jackets. So if, you know, one's being washed or something, then she would still have others that she could wear. So I actually, because the blanket was like twice the size that it is, well, actually, I guess three times because I already made one jacket, and I was going to videotape it originally, but then I thought, well, let me see how this actually works out since I was kind of working off the top of my head. Um, and what I did is it said to cut one fleece and then two of the, the outside material. And like I said, that seemed like a really long and drawn out matter. So I'm going to show you how I did it. And um, I don't even think that you'll need a pattern to do it. it it's just like kind of measure your dog and, and draw it and I just used a sharpie marker and, and, and drew it and guesstimated. The first one 
the first fleece I cut was a little too small. I held it on her and I thought, eh, nope, that's not going to work. So I just took it and laid it down and redrew it. And like I said, with, you know, a dollar little fleece blanket there, I didn't really lose anything. But I cut half of that blanket off also and use that for one of her little dog beds because she gets cold at night. So she's got part of it in her bed and part of it was used to make a jacket. And then we're going to make another jacket out of the same one, maybe two more. But this is what her little jacket looks like. I don't know if you can see that. This is the outside with the jean material. And then this is the fleece on the inside. And I lined the belly strap too. And so it just goes together little velcro right there and then the velcro that goes around the belly there's a velcro strap there but I'll show you step by step how we made it and then it just kinda looks like that let me see if I got that on camera there we go so it looks something like that and then it has a little sign that says insert dog here no not really okay so let's get started I'm gonna use this jacket as my pattern guide now since I have it Okay, so I'm just going to lay the little jacket out. And, you know, I like the way it fits. And I might be able to get Delilah to get up and um, model it for you here in a bit. But um, I like the way it fits and everything. And it, and it actually works out pretty well. The only thing on this one that I'm going to change from this original is that this strap was a, is a little bit too long, I think. So um, I just I, I want it to fit her a little bit snugger. So it's the that'll actually go up against her belly. It's just a little bit loose. And I, I put a, a nice length of Velcro here, but I think I'd like the way it looked if it was, this strap was shorter and then it was more even when you're strapping it on. Anyway, and then also right here on the end, I'd like that more rounded. And that's just an appearance thing. So, um, and you know, you can always, if you want something fancy for your dog, I'm, I'm thinking more practical, you know, because washable, it's always dirty out here. She loves to go back with the goat. She's like a little chicken hawk. She thinks she's supposed to be chasing chickens all day long. And that's her job. I never let her off the leash back there because she is a little chicken hawk. And uh, she's fast. Um, but anyway, so she is around back there with the goats and, and the chickens and stuff. So I wanted something durable and washable. And I think with this, we'll get both. We've got it tough denim, you know, jean material, and then this microfiber fleece, which is, you know, washes pretty well as far as I know, and we'll give it a try. So that's going to be the pattern, and I'm going to draw it out. And I'm sorry, I seem to be so long-winded today. It's like everything I'm saying is coming out like the long story, and I turn around and I say, uh, you know, short story, but it's not. Everything is a long story today. So anyway, let's uh, get this, and I'm going to make a half inch you can do a half inch quarter inch whatever you want about a half an inch and i'm not measuring because you know i'm not mrs perfect backyard homesteader i'm just miss backyard homesteader and just a little bit around and the reason why i'm cutting it a little bigger is because i'll show you how i did it I did this, like I said, the just fastest, easiest way I could think of doing it. And it was just literally, when I did it originally the first time, after I got the, the right size cut, it took literally, you know, like less than 30 minutes, I would say, to put it together. And that was, you know, going in between and having to find the Velcro that I knew I had somewhere in one of my sewing boxes. So doesn't have to be perfect. I guarantee you, your dog will not measure it. Okay? And like I said, this time I'm going to round it. And I won't necessarily cut it quite that long. I'll probably round it off. I'll trim it in a little bit more. But anyway, like I said, I wanted it more rounding. And that's just, you know, an appearance thing. But I liked it. Okay. And then with the strap. The strap is sewn off, obviously, and I'm not going to take it off. But since I wanted it shorter, I'm actually just going to take it from before where I connected it. Okay? And now you, I don't know how chubbly your dog is or what, so you might choose to do it differently. And let me see. I'm going to go down here and use up some material that we've got hanging down here so we're not wasting. In fact... 
and you might want the strap a little wider because um, but you know like I said she's a pretty small dog so I kind of left it like it was and I think I might I'm just gonna go the width and I'll just go down that black line and then this time right here I'm gonna end it so, and that'll be a little bit shorter because I'm going to do the seam allowance also. Okay. So then I, I'm just going to cut it out. And this material is pretty easy to cut too. So because I decided to go down those lines, this is going to make cutting this pretty easy on this piece. And you saw the jacket. It's not going to be perfect by any means. And that's okay because what we need is warm and practical for the little Miss Prissy Pants over there. That's the one thing I will say I've never had a dog that I had to make clothes for before. And I'm sure I don't have to. I could force her to stand out there and shiver, but she does shiver and it takes her a lot longer to do her business when she's cold. And I'm just not interested in sitting out there that long waiting on her to do her business. So part of this I will say is just my own selfishness. I'm not wanting to stand out there that long. And like I said, you do learn that a small dog is nothing like a big dog. So, and Sissy, my border collie, she wasn't really a big dog. I guess you could consider her a medium dog. But she was another one of those dogs. She would, she hated to be in the house. She would have nothing to do within the house. It would be sub-zero. She was getting old and had arthritis, and she would not come in the house unless you walked out there physically, picked her up, and carried her in the house. And then she would make you miserable about having done that to her because she did not want to be in here. So she would, you know, wherever she happened to be, she would whine. And there was only one time that she did not do that, and that's one time when she had, I guess it was like um, almost... I want to say like the puppy flu. It wasn't parvo or anything like that, but she got sick one time. And we took her to the vet, and it kept her for a couple of days. And then when she came home, it took a couple of days of recovery. And at that point, I think she was already like 14 or 15 years old. So it was kind of a slow recovery. And so I made her stay in the house and um, because it was very cold. And I had, you know, kept her in the living room close to the wood stove so she could stay warm. And she actually, that was the only time she did not complain about being in the house. But every other time, up until the day that she passed away, well, I'd say five days before she passed away. The day that she, when she finally passed away, she really, she wasn't getting up anymore. Um, it, the last five days with her was, was very hard. Um, but anyway, so definitely not used to, you know, small dogs not wanting to go outside. Okay, so that's the two fleece lining pieces, okay? So now, I think I will do a uh, just blue jean, regular blue jean for the outside on this one, just so she'll have two different outfits. You know how women are. And I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try this pair. And it's got a little pocket on the back and stuff, on the, on the side leg. My mother gave me these. Um, she doesn't wear them anymore. So I think I'm going to cut it open on the inside seam, fold it out, trace it out, and that way she'll actually have a little pocket on the back too. So we kind of get a free decoration there. Might not work, so let me get it cut open and we'll see. Okay, now, <laughs> you know really if you're smart you won't use a Sharpie when you do this. I used a Sharpie on the, the fleece the first time um, because, well, it was hard to see anything else. But really on the light denim, I could have used uh, a pencil or, you know, uh, a chalk. But anyway, so I did it like this. So it might just work with the pocket. I don't know. It, it's going to be so high up, it may not. But, you know, you could always do it with, like, just a plain piece. So let's check it out and see how this is going to work. And this got a little slit, so that'll be a little decorative thing in the back, too. And like I said, we, just, we can make whatever work, you know. That's what it's all about. We want it to look decent, though. We, want, we don't want her to look, you know, be walking around outside like a ragamuffin, like she's still in a pound or something. But um, 
at the same time. And you know, this material is going to be a, a light color, so I don't know, it might not be the best thing to do a little jacket for her with because it might get so kind of dirty looking all the time. I might not want to do it. But I have some other darker jean material too because um, they get so much clothes and stuff at um, the Optimist Club that a lot of times they do like bag sales where you can fill up an entire like lawn size garbage bag for two dollars. And so a lot of times I will do that to get material and I buy like large size dresses and pants to get the material that I need for different projects. And that works out great because, you know, it's cheaper than going and buying material anymore. Like I said, I was saying earlier, the cost of material has just gotten totally ridiculous. They used to, you know, have like these clearance sales and stuff at, um, at Walmart. Not anymore. I mean, nowadays, you know, what they call cheap or clearance is like three bucks a yard. And yeah, that could be okay, you know, depending on what you're doing, but... Sometimes that can make, you know, something homemade pretty pricey. So um, keep that in mind to, to, that clothes from thrift stores can make good material for another project too, especially quilts. Okay, so I've got the little two parts, the lining and the outside. And the pocket might just simply end up being decorative because of the positioning, but still it might look kind of cute. We'll see. Might not work at all. Might be too stiff on her little back. But again, you know, the few minutes wasted is not really a big thing. And like I said, it's just playing around. I could just go with the other leg and it's not like I don't have plenty of other jeans or other material. But I do have a bunch of leftover material like flannels and stuff from making the guys pajamas because um, every year for Christmas, I make them new pajamas and uh, yeah kind of like a I don't know you could call it a family tradition we just do that um, the babies all get new night shirts the little ones the old-fashioned night shirts and the big guys get pajamas because they just don't want to wear night shirts anymore old fuddy duddies so here we go and done okay so now we're going to sew it together and I'll show you this is like what you're going to want to do is you want it right side facing when you sew it. And I sewed how I did the last one and I'll show you when I actually do it. But let me make sure everything's okay. So I sewed it starting here, went all the way around and then left this very back part open and then I flipped it inside out okay and with this one same thing except I started like right here on the side and I sewed it all the way around to right here flipped it right side out tucked the inseam in and then sewed it so I'll show you how we do that okay and for thread I just um, have a common average thread on here you might want to use like a durable thicker heavy duty thread or something but like I said I just used what I had on hand and um, that's the way we're gonna play it this time too so let's see get it all lined up Make sure you got right sides facing. So on the sheet on. And you know, it's not exact on um, the inseam.
excess around we're not going to worry about because we'll be trimming that away. Okay, so now we want to trim away the excess inside. Because we don't want these big old thick bulky seams on her clothes. It might not be comfortable. And then when you get to the curves, oops, you want to kind of make little clips in there. So when it, you turn it inside out, or right side out, I guess you should say, then where the curve is, it'll be nice and smooth. It won't get lumpy and not make a turn. Well, my pocket's going to be kind of thick. Okay, and what you want to do too is before you actually, I'm going to turn it right side out now, but before you actually sew it all together and go through all this work, uh, you might want to try the fleece, you know, kind of put it on your dog and get the general sizing to see how it works, okay? And I flipped it inside out, that's why I left this bottom open, okay? And let's see if it's going to look funky or what, but it might not actually look too bad. Okay. And then it's kind of, you know, you could iron it down and keep it from being a little poofy like that, but um, what I did on the last one, sorry, I hope I'm keeping this in the frame, what I did on the last one is I just stitched around the outside and it made it look a little decorative too, and I used red. Okay, so you see it's nice and rounded, and so then what I'll do is on this end where it's open, I'll just tuck it under and make the seam for it. Make the, see? And I do like this one. It turned out a little rounder, not so square like the last one. The last one I just used the seam bottom. See where it's just, and I don't know why that bothered me like that. I just didn't like it like that. Um, so, we'll sew this up like that, and then she will have a little jacket. All right, so now we're going to close off the bottom, and I'm just going to zip around the entire outside to make that little outside seam look like it actually was done on purpose. Well, it was done on purpose, but you know, like it's part of the design, so to speak. Like I said, I doubt anybody's going to be inspecting the doggy jacket that close, but you wouldn't want your doggy to be, you know, laughed at at the doggy playground, right? Okay. And I did a rough little fitting on Delilah, so I also marked off, if you'll see here where the, where her little belly strap is going to go. And I have only black velcro, so black velcro is what we will be using for this. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is, so when I wash it, it doesn't kind of, you know, always come apart or lose its shape. Um, with the lining in the outside, I'm just going to stitch around the pocket. On the other one, I just stitched down the back seam. So we can do that too, but like I said, that's just so it doesn't lose its shape when you wash it. It'll help it hold it better. Do that on both sides. light blue thread so you won't even see it but you could use a contrasting color if you want it to be like a decorative addition. Okay. 
Here we go. And you can do that to both sides or just keep it on one side. It doesn't matter. It's it, like I said, the practical purpose is so that when you wash it, it doesn't separate out, you know, come come loose and lose the shape of the little jacket. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing for the little strap. Right sides facing. And just start kind of, I'm trying to make sure we're lined up here. There we go. Just start kind of midway, not midway, but um, about a third of the way towards the end, I'm going to say. And I'm guesstimating here. You can do a quarter of the way, just whatever you prefer. do just like we did on the little vest. We're going to trim away the excess real quick. And don't cut too close to the seam because you don't want it to come open of course. And I know a lot of you experienced homesteading women out there are going, duh, but, you know, I remember being a first-timer, and you do things, and then you learn. Okay, and by the way, some of my sewing looks, you would think I still was a first-timer. I've actually been sewing since I was a kid. Um, nothing <laughs> of professional quality, I assure you, but practical. You know, when I was, I think I was probably, I don't know how old I was before I realized that Barbie was actually sold with clothes because none of my Barbies ever came with clothes. So one of the things we got was when we got a Barbie, then we also got scrap material and we sewed clothes for Barbie. So we had original Barbies. All right, and then we're just going to flip it inside out. We're going to do the same thing. All right, see, now you have your little strap that's going to go under the belly. And you definitely need to check it on your dog and measure your dog because, you know, it, it, some dogs are skinny, some are little chubblers. My mom's got a dog that looks like a, a barrel with legs, and she's supposed to be a golden retriever. Okay, so I'm just going to do just like I did with the vest. I'm going to tuck the seam under. And I'm going to sew it on the side, and then same thing, I'm going to sew it around, and it's just an aesthetic value. Okay, sorry about that camera died, but um, I went ahead and I finished sewing the strap closed. We can see that. So I sewed it, it's nice and flat, and I really like the width of this one better than I do on the black one. See how it's kind of small? And um, so, and I attached it on where I put the marks, and all I did to attach it on was simply just laid it up there and stitched it around in like a moon shape. So now the sewing part is done for the basic um, jacket. So now I'm going to place the Velcro because we want it to close here and a closure up here. And then I'm going to place the other piece of Velcro right here. Whoops, sorry. Hope I didn't get out of screen. Right here and right here. So when it attaches, it'll close like that. Okay. And I want it to look kind of symmetrical. So 
I'm hoping because I made that strap smaller and I'm pretty sure that I got it about right because I measured it on her a couple of times and what I did was before I sewed it on here again I held it on I laid this across her and held it on and then put it across over to here okay and so then I knew about how long it needed to be and how wide so I think this will be about right and this is pretty soft material both sides so I think this one here is a little stiffer because you see with that black material it was thicker where this blue jean material is not quite as thick it's softer it's more worn kind of stretchy too but anyway so let me start getting the velcro sewed on okay so I cut a piece like I said, I've got this big roll here, and it's really nice because each of the straps has both sides on it, so um, you just have to switch the sides to whichever piece you want connecting. So this is going to be the fuzzy side here, and I'm just rounding the edges a little bit. Okay, so it fits in there nicely. Good. And then the other piece is going to go, like I said, right here. And here I put the, the fuzzy side. So on this side, I'll put the rough side. And I'll put it about right there. So, same thing. I'm just going to round it a little bit. No, you don't have to. It's kind of a silly little thing. I just like rounded edges for some reason. Okay, so should go about there. Yep, that should do it. Okay, so let's sew it on real quick. It's a little bit jiffy. that uh, velcro that is uh, a no-sew stick-on velcro honestly I have never had luck with that stuff and it could just be me but I made some wheelchair bags one time and they just did not hold up so I prefer just to sew it it doesn't take much to do it and then you know that your stuff is fastened and that you're not going to be losing Velcro when you're out walking the little princess that don't like her feet getting wet or whoever it might be. It might be your dog named Bubba. I don't know. Okay, so that's the first one and I'll go ahead and I'll do the other one. Okay, we're going to do the exact same thing for the little neck closure. Just remember to check that you have opposite sides of the Velcro. So now I'm going to do the opposite side and then we'll see if little Delilah is in the mood to model for us. She may not be. She wasn't feeling too good earlier, but we'll see. Okay, and there we have it. The last step. So I guess we'll go see if uh, Delilah might model it for us. And there's Delilah with her jacket on. I was trying to get her to stand up for us, and she's just tired and cold, but now she's got her new jacket on, so. You see, it fits her pretty nice. There she goes, she gave us a complete 360 view. She's trying to arrange her blanket 